Hello and welcome to another episode of Smarter Tech. I am back with BD Erickson. BD, thanks so much for being here today. Thanks for having me back. You know, part one of this interview, I think it's essential for everyone to listen to the first part because we will not get into all the basics of dirty electricity. We did a very thorough uh, discussion on that, what is dirty electricity, the possible impacts on human beings and all of biology. We did talk about uh, dairy cows, for example, a lot of the science has been done on farm animals. Uh, and then how dirty electricity can also increase our electricity bill and why the justification for filtering out dirty electricity is not only a health one, but also uh, a practical one for financial reasons. And also, so there's a lot of reasons why you would want to do that. However, at the end, you kind of hinted uh, towards something very interesting that is happening with the industry with solar panels. And where I come from on an EMF standpoint is I keep hearing from building biologists. Uh, these are the professionals, kind of engineering background, they come to a house with professional level meters, they take readings, and one of the EMF types that they, that they test for is dirty electricity. What they tell me is, you know, Nick, if there's a solar panel installation in a home, it becomes very problematic on a dirty electricity standpoint. So what are you seeing with solar panels and um, how can we mitigate it? I want this conversation to focus on that specifically. So let's start by just, do solar panels really create a lot of dirty electricity? What's your opinion on this? <clears throat> Pardon me. So it's not the solar panel itself. It's really two other components that go with okay. the solar installation. In either order, we'll just, we'll just take each of them. The solar inverter. So the solar panels make direct current but of course we live in an alternating current world. So the solar inverter's job now is to take that direct current um, at whatever voltage it's got. So that would depend on how many panels in that string. You know, the more panels in a row, the higher the voltage goes, as high as 600, voltage, um, 600 volts in most residential situations. And it's gonna turn that into alternating current at two legs of 120 volts in the US. Okay, so that process itself creates harmonic distortion, interference, and these electromagnetic fields. In fact, <clears throat> it's so well known that each inverter has ratings on it. It will have harmonics, distortion, etc., max numbers. And most of them will say, you know, less than 3% THD. Okay, so one piece of the puzzle is the solar inverter itself and simply the way it has to function to make usable electricity from the panels for your home. The other part of the equation, especially here in the U.S. now, is a net meter. Well, that's a smart meter. Well, what's that mean? That means that it can record the electricity that the panels make, so that first of all, your bill is down, right? And then in the U.S., what we usually try to do is bank some watts. Well, what's that mean? It means that in July and August, we have these long, sunny days. We're actually overproducing. So we're spinning the meter backwards, if you will. We're storing our watts so that in December and January, when maybe it's shorter days, of course, and maybe the panels have snow, depending on where you live, you can get some of your watts back. Okay, so we talked about what dirty electricity is and the fact that it's real. So really here we're talking about where does it come from? <clears throat> and there are four, I would say, main culprits, if you will, Nick, in major causes from dirty electricity. And these four, in any order you want to give them, are smart meters, solar inverters, lighting, especially LED and fluorescent lighting, and then our DC tech devices, because again, anything DC operates differently than AC. So uh, an LED, for example, light emitting diode. Diode is a kind of a one-way door, if you will. So they strobe, they clip. So when I go solar, holy moly, Nick, I just added two of the four biggest culprits right on my house. Yeah. And so, right, you, if you didn't have a smart meter before, now you do to make them work and the solar inverter. So the building biologists are correct. Here's what oftentimes we find. You go into a house that does not have solar, but it has LED lighting and everyone's got a couple of tech devices these days, it seems like. So yeah. they're reading on one of the common EMI meters. So there's three brands. 
uh, Greenwave, Stetzer, and Static. Like we're the three manufacturers of the main meters in this industry. You probably get a reading of five or six hundred when you're really looking for under 50. So it's already 10 times. But with Solar, Nick, most of those meters can't even read it. They just say error. Wow. So the Green Wave and the Stetcher go to 1999. The static meter, we actually made ours go to 2999 because so many homes we were testing were maxing out. Oftentimes it will even max out our meter. So Nick, we don't even know what the real number is if you can't read it. So what are we saying then? If you go solar, unfortunately, and I'm the biggest solar dealer in Western Montana. I grew up in a solar panel manufacturing household. I love it. I'm not against it. I'm not negative on it, or I, yeah. I want our listeners to know. I love it. I think it's a wave of the future. I think we need renewable energy. Um, I, I love the technology. <clears throat> it's just a simple, unfortunate byproduct that we get these huge culprits in a solar inverter and the net meter to the point where you probably have 100 X, the dirty electricity. I'm talking about 50 to 100 times as much simply because of the operation of these devices. That's uh, that's unfortunate um, that that it produces so much of this stuff. And so I've heard also from building biologists, one of them being Oren Miller, to give him, give him the credit. He, he operates from California. He talks about certain brands of inverters are cleaner than others. He mentioned, uh, I think, Sunny Boy, uh, nice. which uh, might be German, I think. Uh, it, can you mention brands that maybe are a little bit cleaner? And uh, if they're cleaner, does it mean that they have some sort of internal filtering happening where it doesn't dump back these harmonics on the line? So that's a great question. And and I love Oren Miller as a human being. He is a leader in our, in our industry. He really is. Yeah. And so... You know, even though, like, I, I consider myself and my team kind of this next generation of EMF conscious, clean electricity thinkers, we stand on the shoulders of men like David Stetzer and Ora Miller and these guys. Um, I've often said that, you know, I think, you know, Stetzer's products are ready for an upgrade, but I humbly acknowledge that I stand on the shoulders of men like this. So I want to acknowledge Oram too. Um, yes, he's correct. So a, a couple things, you know, whenever you buy a brand of anything, there's a quality, right? Um, maybe in, from an inexpensive car um, to an Audi or some great Porsche, some great German car, where you know just the engineering was so thoughtful that the mechanics are superior, will probably last longer, maybe perform better. Yeah. Inverters are the same way, right? And so you can have maybe something that was made um, in China or Asia specifically to be inexpensive and nothing wrong with that. You've got to have that part of the market too versus something made in Germany or Austria or something where they are a little bit more expensive, but the, the engineering is simply superior because it was so thoughtfully made. Um, yeah, the SMAs and the Sunny Boys usually have less THD, but there's also a lot of models. And so, you know, depending on the size of your solar system, are you single phase or three phase, you know, what's your budget, etc. Even though there are some grant brands that are superior, it doesn't necessarily mean that every model hmm. made by that brand. <clears throat> and since just by the natural functionality of solar, I would suggest, and, and not to sell my stuff, that's certainly not my intent. I think you need a filter and it's the conclusion of all of our scientists and our staff here that you need a filter no matter what brand you go. Yeah. So it is, you know, SMA and some of these have a superior um, functionality oftentimes. So the number's lower, but Nick, if you started, you know, at a hundred times the X, even if it is lower, you really want to consider a filter from one of the major um, filtering manufacturing brands in our humble opinion. Yeah. And uh, you did mention that uh, some of your products have been, are they integrated inside certain solar installs or what's your relationship with certain solar companies now nowadays um, are, are they aware of the health effects or uh, are they aware of the harmonics being a big problem for for people in their home so that's that's a great question that's got several chunks and if i if i rabbit trail bring me back around because this has got several sure. components <clears throat> number one two of the largest solar panel inverter manufacturers that are used in the US have reached out to us specifically um, and talked about either packaging, partnering, including 
um, building in. And those were these are companies so much larger than static. It was incredible that they reached out. Now, candidly, and I don't want to you know say too much, but it was less about them caring about the biological. I think maybe they're still not sure about that. Yeah. But they get so many questions. They get so many queries. So many people when they're using their products are asking about EMF, dirty electricity, EMF radiation, that they wanted to start going down that road of investigating it. Right. That's nice. So that's that's incredible. So that's on a solar panel inverter manufacturing side. Gotcha. On the other side of it, a lot of the solar companies that do a lot of big installs. So there's a, a residential solar company in the US called Titan. Um, at last report, I believe they installed 4,000 residential systems in one month. Um, another bigger biggie is Legacy. They're installing about 2,000 a month. Um, Eris, about 1,000 a month. These have all reached out to us about partnering, packaging, including with. Um, I'm going to give Eris props, not because they use my product. I mean, <clears throat> obviously, I care about that. But they do nearly a thousand solar residential installs a month, and they will not install solar without a power perfect. Um, the CEO's wife actually, I when I reached out to their company, I was trying to get a hold of them. I spoke to this lovely uh, female human on the phone that was just delightful to speak to, and I started talking to her about dirty electricity. And she's a mother, and so you know it started. It was landing on her ears and her heart what we were talking about. So I sent her a plug-in unit and a meter as a gift. Um, for her workspace. And she saw it. The owner of the business called back. That happened to be his wife, Amy Brady. And I, I had no idea it was not planned. It was just one in a million. Um, and so she actually got active on the school board. They wanted to put 5G right on the roof of the school. She, they, she kept that out. She said, no way. You know, we can't have a 5G tower literally on the roof of the school, no matter what it means to connectivity, no matter what it means to dollars and cents, maybe yeah. of this sort of this, um, you know, company paying us, she said, no way. And so there are solar companies now that are aware and are taking steps and they're not small ones, they're big ones. And so we're working with also Legacy right now and Titan to include it. And <clears throat> I won't say specifically that they always include it for health. One of the yeah. things that happens in the solar industry is when you get solar, you have to pull a permit. And once I pull a permit, that's public record. So anybody that's looking, Nick, now knows that I'm interested in solar in in my house to the point of I'm planning on it. So what happens then, other solar companies come. They want to present to you. They want to maybe offer you a lower price, et cetera. So what these solar companies do is they they get our product and they say, okay, you know, Mr. Pinole, glad to get you um, some solar. It's going to take about a month probably before we can install. Let's get you cleaning your power and saving today. They install the unit then, and now it's begun that process, right? So if somebody else now comes to pitch you, you already have a very expensive piece of equipment wired in at your panel. Um, you're already maybe saving money or beginning to feel the effects. It just makes it much harder now to unravel that deal. So while they do care about humans, while they do care about the EMF, it's a really great way to secure that deal it, immediately, if you will, and at least start that process going. Yeah. Did they identify as a business also, are they able to make claims about possible electricity savings because solar technologies must take a lot of electricity? It, it must be a substantial investment to have solar run a lot, right? I, I don't have solar a on my Absolutely. Condo, but, yeah. Absolutely. So so in the U.S., you're, you're talking about probably 20,000 U.S. for a small home. 40, 50,000 is probably the average larger good size install um, in the wow. US. That's a major investment, right? And s since we're going to talk about this dirty electricity, when you have solar, you have more. So here are some of the things that we talked about last time that I will ca recap a little bit. Yeah. When you charge your phone, it charges slowly. It's it very warm. It gets very hot maybe while it's charging. And you'll notice it because it's not every time. Uh, the back of your refrigerator is hot. Um, the air conditioner motor is very warm. Uh, your DVR, your computer screens, all these things are warm. So this excess reactive power, this excess dirty electricity and non-usable power has to go somewhere, right? It doesn't turn into pixie dust. It turns into heat. That's how it represents. Dirty electricity and this wasteful, non-usable electricity represent as heat. Heat's not free. Heat is 
pure watts. So when your DVR is hot, it doesn't make it happy, but that's also wasted electricity. And your phone in the back of your fridge and all these things are wasted electricity. If you live somewhere it's warm, now your air conditioner motor is warm and it's battling itself and it's making this cold. But you have all these little heaters in your house now. You have all, you know, your screens and all your, exactly. your things are, right? They're kicking yeah. out all these BTUs that your air conditioner is now fighting. So simply by cooling those things, the Department of Energy says that, you know, behavior is probably the most important. But after that, if you're heating and cooling, can cycle, you know, less event cycles or run less often so that usually you know how where you keep your thermostat that that has a big impact on your bill well who doesn't want to be comfortable we all want to be comfortable right so there's absolutely a quantitative savings that's guaranteed and a lot of them guarantee a written percentage because number one it's going to lower the amp draw on your big energy hogs so your dishwasher air conditioner refrigerator freezer power perfect lowers amp draws on all those you know, major amp hungry energy hogs, we call them. And if they run cooler, they're probably going to last longer. Boy, that sure follows that a device getting clean, regulated power and, and being cool could last longer. But your power bill also goes down from cooling. And so there is another side benefit then, you know, away from health and away from these other things. That's a real tangible energy savings. And then too, if, um, how long is it going to take to ROI? So in Missoula, Montana, where I live, before federal and tax rebates, and not everybody qualifies, you have to have a tax appetite for them to qualify. You're looking at about a 10 or 11 year ROI on solar. If you can use the Fed and state tax rebates, you're looking at about seven years. So that's about the, the advertisement of the pitch on solar. If you save another 5 to 12% on your power bill, you can take a whole year off that. You're down to six. So now think about if I'm a solar sales guy and I'm out there and I'm competing with the rest of the world and everybody can get tier one panels. We can all get the same inverters and the same brands. So what sets your company apart? I'm going to take good care of you. I'm going to be timely. I'm going to be pleasant, right? You could, If you call, I'm going to take your call and I'm going to help you. But also, we're going to deliver this clean power. So if you've thought about EMF, we've now taken you from not giving you more like most solar does, but actually giving you less than you had even before. And we're also going to lower your bill and cool your heat. It's a surge protector. Um, your items are going to last longer. And while we're at the exact same price, their ROI is seven years. Ours is six. And we can get you saving today. It's very wow. compelling. It's one of the reasons our business is growing so fast. That's, uh, that's a very uh, f fortuitous um almost coincidence that in, in an industry you um, you save electricity help the environment which is a popular thing to do these days like it's no one would argue that saving energy these days isn't good for the planet so that's good that's super mainstream and then also people get the good side effect that they're in fact helping their health through that reduction of their electricity which the science points towards the fact that it's probably stressful to your biology, so why not, right? Uh, do you need an install that is dedicated, let's say, of a power perfect box or some sort of mitigation device? I know you have the power perfect, you might even have other things. Do you need to have something dedicated for your solar panel install and then something else for the rest of your home? That's something I heard from certain. EMF mitigation specialists, what do you normally see? Does it depend on the size of the install of the solar panels? So that's a great question. You you should only need one. <clears throat> so depending, so we do have sizes. We have standard, heavy duty, and super duty. So you may need a heavy duty or a super duty. In fact, you almost surely will now that you've got solar, but you don't need a second one. Okay. Putting that one on the main panel will service the whole home, everything on that panel and its sub panels all in one so you don't have to get to oh that's great okay wow i didn't <laughs> okay well that's <laughs> as simple as they get my god well that's good good to know because of course double the price wouldn't be ideal i guess if you have a, a mansion with uh, 56 bedrooms it might be something else but <laughs> if we're talking right. about the average home uh one is sufficient and i i did hear just a a side note from my my colleague brian hoyer in in his mind he's starting to recommend these uh heavy duty units that are more powerful more and more 
simply for the reason that things are evolving in the wrong direction as far as dirty yes. electricity goes. So if you want to future proof your install in a sense and in the next 10 years the dirty electricity that your neighbors produce because unfortunately they might not be listening to this show please share with them. But if they're not, they might start in installing CFLs and not understanding these things. It can pollute inside your home. So just thinking about also future proofing. Uh, are you seeing at the moment that installs are uh, lasting in time uh, as far as their ability to keep the levels down? So that's a great question too. And you touched on a couple of important things. Number one, um, just technology and the way we're using technology and the things that are being invented are increasing dirty electricity. In 1995, you did not need a static unit in most yeah. cases. <clears throat> there might be some situations where your home has dirty electricity, but you know, we used incandescent light bulbs. We didn't have a lot of tech devices. Um, cell phones were just making their leap. There was, you know, dish network and direct TV and all these digital deliveries didn't really exist yet or were in their infancy. There was no crypto mining. Um, indoor marijuana growing was illegal in the U.S. Yeah. Um, these these things are major contributors to dirty electricity, and we're connected. We've had people put a power perfect on their home, save you know sixteen percent on their utility bill, and then their neighbor comes over and says, "Hey, what's changed? My bill's down ten percent." We we have probably <laughs> happy <one>. birthday. <laughs> <laughs> no charge, neighbor. You know, um, we probably have a hundred testimonials. You know, because we have over 85,000 installed. We, we're a 13-year-old company. We have wow. probably over 100 testimonials where the neighbors felt the effect financially, physically, et cetera, from the, dirty, from the cleaner electricity. So as you said, you can help clean your neighbors, but you, you can also help dirty your neighbors. And your neighbor can also help, you know, dirty yours by the use of these devices. And what happens sometimes is maybe we've got a person that's very EHS, they're electro hypersensitive, they, they, they need low DE numbers, numbers, and then their neighbor gets solar. And the neighbor's uh, not, yeah. a, not, not a bad person, they're a lovely individual. Um, they've made, you know, a financial or maybe green decision for them, for them, for their themselves, excuse me, but it negatively impacts the neighbor, right? So there's a lot of that going on. And as you were saying too, the lighting that we use, the tech devices, these things keep growing it. So you certainly never go wrong, I think, getting a heavy duty or a super duty to kind of, you know, future protect yourself as you stated, because we don't know what the next leap in technology is. Is there something else that's coming? And we know 5G is hitting. Well, yep. where's 5G lands? It lands on antennas. Well, what's an antenna? A copper wire, a copper pipe. Those are sure great antennas. Well, whose house is not full of copper wiring? and copper plumbing. We all are. So it is, just as you said, it is exacerbating at a, a high level, an increasing level right now today as we speak. Yeah, and when when you're referring to 5G, of course, the wireless is a bit different. However, I did hear that if you live near these cell towers and with 5G, it will become ubiquitous in the sense that their goal in neighborhoods uh, areas is every three to 10 homes, you would have a small cell. Uh, the small cells themselves can draw a lot of power. In fact, uh, the industry is struggling at the moment to keep uh, certain small cells from literally not exploding but not malfunctioning because of the overheating effect. So I'm thinking the cell towers themselves, when they're somewhere in the vicinity, must contribute to the dirty electricity problem. Uh, and that's a thought, but I, I know it's extremely energy hungry. In fact, that's something the industry has said has really slowed slowed uh, the role of 5G is the fact that these things are expensive, they overheat, and they're kind of having trouble rolling out the, the small cell technology at the moment for because of that. Have you heard of dirty electricity being created by <clears throat> nearby cell phone towers? Beyond contestation. Absolutely, okay. positively. Yeah. So some of the things that are happening, you touched on a few of these. So um, crypto mining is popular. Cryptocurrency is this new thing. We don't see any end in sight. <clears throat> so they set up not only these huge crypto mining facilities that take maybe 5 or 15 megawatts of power, that really influences the community. Is there the infrastructure? Is there the available power? Is there the coal plant or the, the nuclear plant or the dam that can facilitate that, A, um, and then B, a lot of humans want to start crypto mining in their own home. 
And so you're talking about, you know, probably 10 more amps at 120 volts <laughs> um, of additional power that that family home normally in a normal situation would not need. How many people in the neighborhood are doing this? Um, indoor marijuana growing and just indoor growing in general. I mean, who doesn't want maybe some fresh produce? If you could do that, that's another energy intensive thing. Yeah. And then, of course, these new technologies like the 5G, anytime you're transmitting a signal, that takes power that it, you've got to push that wave and so that takes power and you're exactly correct they want these things every you know three to ten houses that's going to be hundreds of them in every neighborhood where's that yeah. power going to come from right and if again if, if i can make your neighbor's power clean or dirty that same thing happens from these towers and it happens in kind of a threefold effect number one they distort the wave or add extra waves themselves that's a b that signal lands on my copper pipes. Yeah. See that that signal lands on my copper wiring. And now I'm living in this conductive super antenna. And, you know, it's going to be bad for all of us. But the people that are really sensitive, they're going to be in trouble, Nick. Yeah, I, I agree w with everything you said. And the problem, you know, that jump conductivity or the fact that you can find you, you could you could take uh, certain special meters. In fact, I, I heard that uh, an anecdote from Dave Asprey, who's uh, who has the Bulletproof Radio podcast. He talked about uh, when he um, he came across Wi-Fi for the first time with an engineer that was developing the first Wi-Fi, maybe even one of the first routers ever conceived. And the engineer said, look, there's something cool. I have a special meter and I put it on your body and the antenna touches your body and look, I can download data that's now on your body, right? Oh, look, wow. look how cool this is. And the reality is if we had a special meter, I could technically speaking down, download stuff that's around like conversations and what if I'm able to decrypt, right? But right. technically speaking, this information discharge, this electricity is on your body. So the human body is an antenna, though, so that that happens, right? You have the, the, the increased body voltage that we see through dirty electricity and normal electricity, and Wi-Fi can get on everywhere. It can get on, 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 on surfaces that are, that are metallic, and also the more antennas you install, the more this <coughs> is happening. So this is also a phenomenon where dirty electricity is kind of, um, I don't know if induced is, is is the right word but it, it kind of pollutes your wires just because the electro pollution is increasing in levels um and and another thought i had and maybe we can conclude on that i wanted to to keep this one short but what's the state um uh, are, are you aware of the state of the electronics industry or what electronics engineers say about the dirty electricity problem uh, is there a discussion in the industry where uh, they're realizing that this stuff is out of control and that the machines are producing too much dirty electricity, which might lead to, simply speaking, engineering problems? Absolutely. So one of the very best studies that I've read on the subject matter <clears throat> was in concluding in Europe, conducting in Europe, and they had gone from the you know the Edison resistive light bulb, the filament light bulb that we all grew up with, that we used for 120 years successfully, to the compact fluorescent lamp, the the curly Q. That was the first major leap in lighting um, since Thomas Edison. And what they concluded was the standard light bulb that we all grew up with has a power factor of perfect. It's 1.0. It's unity because it resists, right? It doesn't want the electricity. It resists it, so it naturally cleans it. And they changed that to the compact fluorescent lamp that most of them have a power factor of about 50. So about 50% is real power. It's watts. 50% is reactive power. That's one of the reasons they got so hot at the base was even though they didn't operate the same way, um, their heat was from this reactive power. Well, you have to now push twice as much electricity if only half of it's usable. So in Europe, they found that while the old light bulb was 60 watts, and the new light bulb is 20 watts, they couldn't push 20 watts. They had to push like 30 watts because so little of the power was usable now that it really diminished the gain, if any, Nick. And now we have this huge proliferation of dirty electricity. So again, our stuff is hot. Do manufacturers of electronics care about dirty electricity? Absolutely, because they want their device to operate as advertised. 
they want their device to have at least some longevity. Now we know that they build in some obsolescence, but they don't want it dying day one. Yeah. (laughs) Right. And so they know uh, these are brilliant engineers that when you have a compounding effect and now we've given our consumer 30 devices that are causing dirty electricity and lowering its quality, that that will at some point ultimately also break our thing too, right? (laughs) Right? It'll also make our thing hot too. So some of the technologies that we use are actually showing up more and more in components. And I I don't believe they're, and I don't want to say anyone's, you know, anything disparaging. I don't know why they're doing it, but I believe the, the big driver is simply to help their device last longer, perform well, uh, perform as advertised, et cetera. So yes, there's not only awareness, but, you know, d- discussions about it. That's good, I guess. Um, maybe we'll, we'll foresee a future where electronics will be forced to be built with sufficient filtration, uh, maybe filtration in and then out. I don't know exactly how that will work, but just for the sake of your phone's battery, for the sake yes. of that cheap electronic you just bought made in China and you want it to last uh, more than a month or else they will go out of business out of too many RMA requests. So, yeah, it's interesting that uh, eventually, you know, when a problem gets so big that an industry's bottom line is hurt, well, it's right. going to be sorted out very <laughs> quickly and someone's going to invest massive money to make it happen and the competitors will be forced to do so. And I'm very happy about what's happening with solar because i think a few a few years from now i'm gonna be able to say you know what solar panels aren't uh perfect you gotta watch how you install them maybe not have them like right next to a pillow or something but the dirty electricity problem will start getting better especially with solar uh itself and maybe the electronics will become cleaner so that's you know, that's a move towards safer technologies. And I've always been saying the last five years in my work, when consumer demand is sufficient, technology will evolve. And also when an industry is aware of a problem that can hurt their bottom line, then they will they will act. Or number three would be when an industry is aware of a competitive advantage they can have to move towards safer or cleaner or greener or smarter technology. And if an industry, an entire industry, one competitor that is a major player enough realizes that they can have an edge of 5%, then all the other players will freak out and adopt that same technology or else they will lose market share. So it's very simple capitalism that, uh, I guess the good thing about capitalism, like there's, in fact, there's some good things about it. Sure. And that can be it, that can be fast innovation when an industry is forced sometimes it's not in the direction of health but when these two are aligned it can be very very fast uh just look at the organic food movement for example and how quickly it's 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 sprung and walmart was out of the game completely within a few years uh, i heard or i read i don't know if this is accurate that walmart was one of the biggest producers or or buyer uh, reseller of organic food in the u.s who would have thought like walmart really you sell like cheap plastic things that break into seconds and all of a sudden you sell the most organic food Mm -hmm. at one point mcdonald's might be the healthiest place in the world i don't know like we're gonna see but uh, it's (laughs) tremendous is there anything else we didn't address you wanted to talk about specifically towards solar if not just um mention where your products are sold uh what options are available anything you want to mention Yes. So, so that change that you and I want so desperately starts with men like you and I and people having discussions, human beings having discussions. So the two big inverter companies that reached out to us, reached out to us because customers were asking. So just as you said, enough customers ask, they'll do something. Once one of the big players does it, chances are everybody's going to follow or they're going to lose market share. So our company again, is called SATIC, S-A-T-I-C. We have a free educational site, staticusa.com. Um, our YouTube channel is Static USA, and it's free. Anytime you see a commercial on there, guys, no, that's from YouTube. It's not from us. Um, that's, <laughs> yeah. that, that's not how we market. You know, <laughs> <laughs> they started adding commercials to everything, didn't they? And yeah. our our sales site is Static Shield, um, but you can Static always Shield. call, Perfect. get great customer care. Um, you don't don't feel obligated to just go to the site and buy. 
please go to the site and look and shop and browse and feel safe to browse and then call our great team um, Alden and Valerie, Al and Val, we call them, and and get time with them, finding out exactly what you need, how to use it, where it goes, etc., so that you get the best experience from us and the best result for you and your house and your family. Tremendous, uh, BD has been a great discussion. Please, everyone, uh, wherever wherever you're listening to this on uh, podcasting platform, send me an email. Let me know about this interview on YouTube or uh, BitChute, any alternative platforms. Leave a comment. I want to know what you guys think. I think this is uh, great content from BD and you're highly informative and it's been the best discussion I've had on Dirty Electricity. I'm glad we did this part two. And uh, if there's novel things coming down, down the pipe, I'd love to have you for a part three, who knows? So uh, please stay in touch. Thank you so much again. Thank you. So uh, BD, you have a special discount on the Power Perfect Box, not only the Power Perfect Box, but also everything in your store. And that's a very generous offer. So uh, you're going to create a, some sort of coupon code for uh, the listeners? You know, that's exactly correct. Um, we don't do a lot of advertising, as stated. Um, our videos are free. We depend on listeners. We depend on, you know, people like you telling our story, getting the truth out, being brave and standing firm and owning their truth, even if it's not popular. So we've created a discount code, NICK10, N-I-C-K-1-0, NICK10. Please shop at the store when you're ready to check out, enter the coupon code, save 10% on the entire shopping cart on the entire store. That's tremendous. Thank you so much. So that's on Static Shield. Dot com. That's correct. Perfect. So Nick 10, N-I-C-K 10. Thank you so much, BD. So you can find all the information underneath this video or go saticshield.com. Use the coupon code Nick 10 for 10% off everything in the store. Thank you so much. Thank you.